You know, honestly, from I do mostly session, so I I spend a lot of my life being a chameleon, honestly, and uh, and so as the years have gone by, I've, I've picked up a lot of little tips and tricks for uh, from a um, logistical, like tuning your drum standpoint, um, to obtain certain things, but. Um, but my style is really an amalgamation of all the years and all the different artists I've worked with and all the different producers I've worked with who have kind of added. It's interesting because you mentioned like, oh, I, don't, I want to sound like so-and-so or I want to sound like Dan Needham or whoever. It's like, to me, I, to, I'm just an amalgamation of guys I've heard. Right. It's just, and the gift right. goes on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But um, as far as my sound, uh, so far I don't even think of it as my sound. I, I think of it as somebody else's that I have adapted and borrowed, really. Well, I can relate to the okay. live side of it, like going from playing mostly heavy rock, and then when I when I got the Rev gig, I had been playing with the Shack Shakers. We used to open for the Reverend Horton Heat, and when their drummer left, um, they called me up because they they had seen me play opening for them, and so I basically got that gig without an audition. You know, they said, "Man, you got it if you want it." So I had to cram and learn a bunch of songs. And, did the same thing, chart thing, but but when I started listening to the tracks, this is a different type of sound than you know the way I was tuning my drums with the metal bands. A lot of 4K click in the kick drums, <laughs> talking to the sound man about compressing the snare even live, get it really uh, loud sounding, you know, and stuff like that. This gig was way more organic, and so uh, I. Uh, approached tuning my drums differently. You know, I put on coated heads a little bit looser than I normally would. Uh, even tried closing the kick drum without a hole in it. And so I was trying stuff like that. And it's a great sound. It's a way different feel when you hit the bass drum without a hole in it. It's a lot of air movement, yeah. you know, and I, I, that was hard. But I think your sound develops the more you, <coughs> excuse me, the more you uh, develop in your career. And learning, you know, I still am not sure if I'm tuning my drums right. You know, I was equated it to like uh, comedians always talk about when they got their first laugh, kind of thing. <laughs> as a young guy, so as a young guy, you're playing, you don't know anything. You know, you're <laughs> 10, 11, 12 years old, and crap. And people that are playing in the bands, you all of a sudden go, oh. or you, something gets a reaction for the good stuff anyway, and bad stuff too. I mean, it's a bad reaction. You remember it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's you know, it wasn't about. It was never necessarily about what I thought. Again, was cool or if it was sort of what people felt and reacted to that you start putting in your, you know, sort of putting in your bag and then them with you. So you know, when you go out on a gig, you can pull those three out and and you're there. You know, you're 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 speaking the basic language. People are going to feel it, whether it's you know, fusion, jazz, rock country, you come out and do that basic thing, people are going to react to it immediately, and then you can get into all the other stuff later. Well, I think I think with your own sound, to piggyback off of what these guys were saying, I mean, I don't feel like I've, as far as sonically speaking, that I have the sound that I quite want yet, because, and, when, and, and the reason I say that is because you, the perfect example is somebody like Steve Gadd. Seems like no matter what style he's playing, he's got the same sounding snare, the same mm -hmm. sounding height, the same sounding ride cymbal. Studio, yeah. Same sounding cowbell. And it sounds great. And it sounds great on everything. So that right there is a perfect example of, it's not necessarily the axe as much as it is the player with the exclamation point over his head. It's like a catch-20 with that. It's like, you know, I want people to hear me, but who am I? And, and and like I think most of us here, like you said, we're we're, we're just this collage or, or of, of, of drummers that we love. And when we hear songs that sound like songs that they recorded 30 years ago, we wanted to have that similar. We wanted to have a similar vibe, and so uh, we end up playing and taking from those different things and, and putting it and phrasing sort of how they used to do it because it worked. I mean, I think for me, for sound, it depends on the song. I mean, yeah. my own, when I do sessions, if I'm doing an old country song, loosen the bottom lugs up as much as you can. Yeah. Take middle C, maybe B flat on the snare, put a either a gad ring or a moon gel on it. 
move it around to where you get that that crunch, that old deep fat sound. My personal sound I use is I I'm if I have my preference, it's always middle C with a little ring on my snares, and most of my toms is just above wrinkle. That's just the way I grew up playing rock roll. That's my sound I like. Where somebody like Buddy Rich always had a ring and drum, mm -hmm. and I bury my foot. I mean, I bury. I put a pillow in it where it's just thump, and I get. I let the EQ and the, everything. I think just dead where they'll stay out of the way. That's that's always seemed to work. It depends what what you're going after. For my gig with Travis, he likes a lot of low mids, where the frequencies are out of his way, where the guitar can have that frequency. You know, so it just depends on the gig you're playing. In my you know, so, uh, but as far as my own sound, if I had a preference, it'd be the jaw tuning that they talk about, just above wrinkle. That's a good starting point for me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Take and learn stuff. Learn as much as you yeah. can. And then you got to master something before you can manipulate it. So yeah. master something first. And then put your own spin on it. You know, put take the Steve Gadfield or the, or the Vinny Phil or whatever and try to mess with it. You know, and then when you place that with your own personality, then mm -hmm. you're going to start to develop your own sound. Right on. Yeah. 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 Another yeah. thing, too, is like if you're if you hear a drum sound you like a lot, you find out how they do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What kind of gear, what kind of mics, and pretty now it's easier than ever. Golly, yeah. yeah. back to the school thing, I, I thought teachers tell me after all that have you learned all that and I go no, just forget all that mm -hmm. go do it <laughs> yeah. we taught you all this that's great forget all that because you know a lot of guys come out of school and they're all just full of school and that's cool but nobody really wants to hear right. that because it doesn't really matter that's great we, now we have nine drummers in the room and everybody came here a different way if mm -hmm. some similar some completely opposite ends of the world it doesn't really matter you know so Learn as much as you can, however, whether you can go to school, whether you can't, but uh, kind of forget it all and you do your thing, you know, just, uh, that's a big problem. Don't, don't spew it, it doesn't really matter, just, it's good to have the tools and the language, but uh, you don't want to be wearing that on your sleeve either.